and 216 in your hymnal, 216, far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling. I'm dwelling in Beulah Land, 216, let's all stand together as we sing. Dwelling in Beulah Land, 216 on that first. Far away the noise. singing tonight good place to live isn't it and uh when you're saved and living in the will of god doing what god wants you to do it's beulah land and uh it really is and uh all this in heaven too and uh good to see you back tonight and uh lord's holding that snow off so we can get church in amen and uh it's a good thing and uh looking forward to what he has for us tonight thanks for being here this evening let's pray together shall we father we bow before you here at the beginning of the service thank you for a wonderful morning this morning. Uh, thank you, Lord, for Eddie being here, making his profession of faith and following you in baptism. Thank you for other decisions that were made among your people today. And Lord, uh, it just was good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you for the opportunity for us to be back this evening. We bow here at the beginning of the service and ask you to, to meet with us again tonight. We're a needy people. And Lord, we need our God this evening, and I pray that you would uh, bless this service in a special way and the music, the, the fellowship together, our giving of the tithe and offering, Lord, and, and again, honor the preaching of the Word of God. Accomplish your will, please, in each one of our lives tonight. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. 334 in your hymnal, 334. To Jesus every day I find my heart is closer drawn, still sweeter every day. Let's sing that first together. To Jesus every day I find my heart is closer drawn. He's fairer than the glory of the golden purple dawn. He's all my fancy pictures and his fairest dreams and more. Each day he grows. 
grows so sweeter than he was the day before. The half cannot be fancy. Inside the golden shore, oh, there he'll be so sweeter than he ever was before. His glory broke upon me when I saw him from afar. He's fairer than the lily, brighter than the morning star. He fills and satisfies my longing spirit more and more. announcements for us now the regular schedule this week uh, Wednesday night for the midweek service will be in Revelation 18 this coming Wednesday night and uh, we look forward to our time together Wednesday evening at seven o'clock Thursday night down at the CRC with RU inside at the prison there uh, that's at 6 30 on uh, Thursday evenings and then Friday night for our regular RU here uh, Friday night by the way here with uh, the RU class and the RU kids and the nursery, we had 50 here on Friday night, and uh, so a great crowd, and uh, God's doing good things there on Friday night. And then uh, Saturday, of course, 10 a.m. Uh, for the uh, bus calling and bus visitation and soul winning, and so we invite you out for that. Um, I'll be leaving Friday. My, I leave out of Columbus here during the afternoon, but we fly out of Detroit at 6.30 Friday night. Uh, we go through Paris, France, on to Bang. Bangalore, India, and then we catch a little hopper there to Combatur, Combatur, India, I think it is, and uh, it's a uh, long flight. They are ten and a half hours ahead of us, so like right now, it's about what would that be? Ten after five Monday morning, and uh, so that's the the time difference. If you make a note of that, I appreciate it, and, and I appreciate you praying for us while we're over there. It might be the middle of the night when we're in the middle of the day, but uh, if you would pray for us, I sure would appreciate that, and uh, pray for safety. So I fly out Friday evening, 6:30. Get back on Saturday, February 7th, and um, we uh, get back. I actually get into Columbus about 9:15 Saturday night. Okay, and uh, so, but uh, everything will run as usual here uh, next Sunday morning. Uh, Brother Bob Reed will speak for the morning service, and um, Sunday night, Brother Andy will preach in the Sunday evening service. Wednesday night, February 4th, you'll have missionary Shane Rice, who I mentioned this morning, and you don't want to miss him. That'll be a great time together. Okay, remember, uh, sign up downstairs. A couple of you did this morning, but I need that list to fill out, if you would, for I love my church testimonies. I will make the list up and have it ready by Wednesday evening, all right? And so uh, we'll uh, give you an opportunity to get your name on there, and uh, if not, I'll uh, certainly put your name on there for you and get you volunteered for that. All right, so uh, help us out with that if you would. I would appreciate it. Don't forget, fellows who are ushers are interested in being an usher. We're going to have a meeting with you right after service tonight. Fellows, we'll go down to the conference room and meet in there. I think that'll be the easiest way to do it. And so meet me in the conference room right after the service this evening. All right. I think that's all we have right now. Looking to see if anybody's visiting tonight. And I think it's just us this evening. All right. Let's hear from the choir. When I read a 
463 in your hymnal 463 when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there 463 let's sing that first together when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the saved of us shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share, when his children Yeah. 
39. Can we turn back to number 39? Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to the three nine. Let's stand together once more as we sing. Take my life and let it be. On that first. Take my life and let it be consecrated. our guests. We'll come back and sing their last stanzas together. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee, ever only all for thee. Let's sing that last together. Let's slow it down just a hair and sing this to the Lord. Take my love, my God, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will. seated if you will the ushers will come they'll be ready to receive our offering tonight well. let's have uh, brother Paul Label if you would lead us in our prayer this evening let's pray our heavenly father we thank you for this day that you've provided for us to come and worship you and we pray that you would be with each one of us give us hearing ears and uh and then have to give us the ability to move and do what you want us to do with the service tonight. And we do pray that you'd be with uh, those that are here giving tonight, that they'd be a cheerful giver and give that that you'd want them to give. And then we pray that you'd uh, help us to spend the money wisely so it would be used to glorify your name. Yes. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Bible this evening, if you would, Proverbs chapter 3, Proverbs chapter 3, this evening for the scripture reading. We're going to read the first 10 verses of Proverbs chapter 3. Tonight I'll begin on one, then you'll join me on two, and I'll read three, and we'll alternate that way until we can end together on verse number 10 of Proverbs chapter 3. As our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. And I'll begin on verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the firstfruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. And let's pray together, shall we? Father, add your blessing now tonight to the reading of the scripture this evening. And Lord, we want to thank you again this evening for the Bible. Lord, we are aware this evening there's believers that have gathered and are maybe yet to gather around the world that will share a Bible. Some will only have parts of a Bible. Lord, thank you that we're in a country that has the Word of God, and we can freely bring it and read it, and we possess copies of it tonight. And Lord, I pray that you'll make our hearts ready to receive the truth from your precious Word this evening. Lord, help us to uh, focus and use the special to turn our thoughts and our attention to Thee, so we'll be ready to, to receive what you would have for us this evening. Bless the music to that end, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hmm. Since I started for the kingdom, since my life he controls, since I gave my heart to Jesus, the longer I serve Him, the sweeter He grows. The longer I serve Him, the sweeter He grows. The more that I love Him, more love He bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The stronger I serve Him, the 
Heavenly Father, we bow before you in prayer now, and Lord, uh, I believe that song is true, that the longer we serve you, the sweeter you grow. I pray that everyone would experience that, Lord, and we would, we would not just be a song we sing, but it would be the testimony of our life that that is true, and that not only would we say it, but others people, other people would be able to see it in our lives. And so, Lord, I pray now for the message this evening, and ask for your help as I bring the message tonight, and certainly ask for the help of the people as they listen this evening that you would help them as well and that none of us would miss what you would want to say to us this evening we've made the the effort to come and to be here and to gather together with the people of God in this place and uh, Lord it it just would be a tragic thing to leave and miss what you would say to us this evening and so I pray you'd help every child and teenager and young adult and middle-aged and senior citizen, everyone to listen carefully tonight and help us to, to not miss what the Spirit would say to the church this evening. Lord, may your will be done now in these next few moments that we spend together looking into your word, and I pray it in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 3, there's some incredible words of wisdom. I hope you read the Proverbs through. <clears throat> every month you ought, to, you ought to read the proverb uh, each day that corresponds to the day of the month uh, today you would have read Proverbs 25 and tomorrow Proverbs 26 and by the time you get to January 31st you read Proverbs 31 and then start over again February 1 with Proverbs 1 you'd be amazed how much wisdom is in the book of Proverbs and you'd be amazed how uh, you'll, you'll just continue to peel back layers and see things that you never saw before when you read it through. And uh, God just continually shows you things in the book of Proverbs. But here in chapter 3 particularly, God gives us what I think is the key to Christian stewardship and really the key to successful Christian living, period. And that is... When I, when I announced the title, what it really comes down to, here's what it really comes down to, the very first word of verse number 5. And what is it, church? What is it, church? Trust. trust. It all comes down to trust. It all comes down to trusting God. The song we sing from time to time, trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. It, the, the relationship that you have with God is based on trust and obedience. It really is. And you're going to see that here in Proverbs chapter 3. Notice what it says in verse 1, Forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Now, if you'll do that, what does God do in return? For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. I mean, uh, how many times have you ever said, I just, there just aren't enough hours in the day? And, and you say, just, it, go, they're, they're, they're just not, it just goes by so fast. Well, wait a minute. Uh, God says, if you'll keep His commandments in your heart, 
length of days can be yours. Now, he's not talking about long life because he mentions long life. He means he can lengthen your day. He'll give you more time than what you ever thought you could have in one day. And he'll do that for you. That's a promise from God. Then he says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Now, if you'll, if you'll remember mercy and truth, and by the way, there's always mercy before truth. Don't forget the order that God put them in. And notice he says, if you'll do that, what, it, what will God say? You'll find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. God says, I'll put you in favor, not only in my favor, but I'll give you favor in the sight of people. I'll give you favor in the sight of men. And, and people will look at you differently. And so it's a, it's, it's a great thing to be able to follow the commands of God. Then he tells us in verse 5 to do what? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Now if we'll do that, what will God do? Verse number 6. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He will what? He shall direct thy paths. He will direct our, 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 our goings. He will guide our path. He will direct us in the way that we ought to go but he says we have to trust in him with all of our heart all is an important word there all right and then unless we unless we think we got it made unless we think we got it all figured out notice what he says in verse 7 be not wise in thine own eyes fear the lord and depart from evil he's saying don't you get proud don't you get conceited. Don't you get cocky. Don't you ever think, oh, I got this. Uh, you, better, you better continue to look to the Lord and trust in Him with all your heart. And don't get proud or don't get conceited. Now, if you'll do that and, and you won't get wise and you'll depart from evil, what does verse 8 say? It'll be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. It'll be, hey, it'll be healthier for you outwardly and inwardly. God will give you a healthier life if you'll obey Him and you'll trust in Him. He gives you that promise. Then He says, verse 9, here's what we should do. Honor the Lord with our substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. Now if we do that, what does God say He'll do? Verse number 10. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. God says again that, that if you'll honor me and you'll, you'll give me what's mine, He said, I'll take care of you. In fact, I'll give you plenty. I'll, I'll, I'll give you sufficiency in all things, as Corinthians tells us. You notice uh, these, these commands. I want to give you several observations on the commands and the, the promises here. Number one is this. The commands are all inclusive. In other words, there's, he, he didn't say, trust in the Lord with most your heart. He said, with all your heart. He didn't say, in most your ways, or some of your ways acknowledge Him. He said, in all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. There's, there, there's, there's not sometimes you're supposed to let God lead you, and other times you say, God, I got this. No, no, no. You're supposed to, in all thy ways, acknowledge Him, and let Him direct your path. In every area were to be uh, trusting in Him. It's a matter of our entire heart. It's a matter of our whole heart. It's a matter of following Him with all, all, with all of our heart, not leaning to our own understanding in anything. It's to honor Him with our increase and honor Him with our substance. It's, it's giving everything to God. God says, that's what I'm looking for. It's an all-inclusive affair. Amen. Secondly, we, when we mention this as we went through this, every command precedes a promise. Now, it'd be enough, again, God is so gracious to us, it'd be enough, we ought to do it just because God said so. And that'd be enough. But God, not, God sweetens the pot, so to speak, and, and he, he gives us, say, if you'll do this, I'll do this for you. And, and that's just exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. That's greater than what we would deserve for sure. And then we notice, number three, that the promises are conditional. We do our part, and God does His part. Then if we do what we ought to do, then God does what He says He will do, and He has some tremendous provisions for us as His children. Now, let me give you a couple stewardship statements here, three of them. Number one, God is trustworthy. Amen? God is 
trustworthy. You can trust Him. Number two, and we've talked about this this month, God has entrusted to us, are put within our care, our possessions, our opportunities, our talents, our time, all of those things God has entrusted into our care. We're not owners, we're managers. We're stewards of what God has entrusted to our care. And so, number three, we're trustees of everything God's given to us. We are stewards, okay? Managers, if you will. And so, you have to ask yourself a few questions tonight, and I want to ask you these questions. Number one, don't answer it out loud. Don't poke your neighbor, just between you and God. Do I trust God? Do I trust God? Where do I place my faith? Where do I put my confidence? Just ask yourself that, those, those personal questions. It's easy to say, I trust God. It's easy to say those statements that I obey God completely or I trust God completely. But, but as you really look in your own heart, I want you to ask yourself the question, do I really trust God? Is He truly my source that I look to? Do I really trust Him in everything? That's what I want to ask yourself tonight. Do I just trust Him in some things? Do I trust Him in all things? Do I just trust Him in the big things? Or do I trust Him in the small things? Can I trust God? Yes. Do I trust God? That's the question. Now, I'm going to turn the tables around here a little bit. And I think we can all agree that God's trustworthy and that we can certainly trust Him. But if we turn that around tonight, and maybe this would make us squirm a little bit, but the question would be this, can God trust me? Can God trust trust me am I trustworthy am I worthy of God's trust in me can God give me the things I pray for can God give me the things I ask for because he can trust me or does he have to hesitate and does he have to wait uh, because does God say well no I can't give you that or no I can't touch this area of your life yet because you're not ready to receive that yet. Because I'm not sure you're trustworthy. And you have to understand, am I trustworthy? So let's, first of all, let's talk about God for a minute. And then we'll come back to us. But I want to give you two absolutes to remember about God. Alright? That, that you should never forget about God. Number one is this. God's care is constant. When, you, when it comes to trusting God, and having faith in God and having your confidence in Him, uh, be assured that He constantly cares for us. I know the Bible says <clears throat> there's not a hair of our head that, that He hasn't numbered, that, that if He notices that a sparrow falls to the ground, uh, then He surely knows everything that happens to you and me. And He does. And He does. You know, they had a question today on the radio. And it was, it's kind of humorous at first when you think about it in the scheme of life. And what, what the question the guy posed was this. Does, is, is God involved in sporting events? And, what, and then the first response is, God's got bigger things to do than worry about a sporting event. But here's the thing. If there's believers playing in that sporting event, is God concerned about them? If, if in all their ways they're acknowledging Him, does God have anything to do with them playing in that game? Sure. Now, is He determining the outcome of a game? No, He doesn't care about that. He does care about developing something in those individuals. Win or lose. He cares about whether they're, they're, what they're doing. By the way, whether you eat or drink, whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So in that regard, is God involved? Yeah, He's involved. He's involved as far as the individuals want Him to be involved in their life. No more than you would say, well, God's not involved when I go to work in the morning. 
works work, you know. Church is church. No, God's God and He's involved in everything. And His care is constant. He's always there. Jesus said, I will, in, in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, it talks about, He says, I, He saith, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And by the way, in the, in the, the uh, language the Bible is written in, by the way, it says, I will no, 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 never, never leave thee nor forsake thee. There's five negatives there. In English, a double negative, negative makes a what? A positive. If I say I don't never do that, that means I do it all the time. Because I do not never do it, that means I'm always doing it. Do you understand? That's a double negative means a positive. It's poor English, but it's, that's what that means. But in, in the language the Bible was written in, when you're negative, it was emphasis. Five negatives. For the Lord to tell us, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. His care is constant. It, it, it is always there. Some of you would testify that there were years where you were backslidden. There were years where you were away from God. And God still took care of you. There were times that you were dumb and you did some stuff that really you should have been dead. But God spared your life. You know why? God takes care of you. God's care for us is constant and it's all through the scripture George Beverly Shea the singer who sang for Billy Graham for so many years was sharing that he had many requests for songs to be sung at crusades and, but he said the strangest request he ever had was when somebody handed him a slip of paper one night and wanted him to sing a song as he opened it up and read it he said I want you to sing the song entitled God's Grip Don't Slip God's grip don't slip. And I want to tell you, that's not, that's, again, that's bad grammar, but good communication. Amen? It's, it's good theology because God's grip doesn't slip. I'm not holding on to God. God's holding on to me. And so I can, I can have my hand like that, but it doesn't matter. He's got a hold of me. And He doesn't let go. He will not let go. And so I can, He, he tells us we can cast all of our care upon Him. All of our care, all of our concerns, all of our anxieties, all of our fears, all of our troubles, all of our problems, we can cast them all upon Him because He cares for us. He cares for us. His care is constant. I'm glad it's not occasional. I'm glad it's not sporadic. I'm glad that it's, it's consistent. It's faithful. He's always there. We are, the Bible says, we're in the hand of God. You know what that means? It means nothing's going to touch you that doesn't touch God first. We're in His hand. And so whatever gets to us had to come through God. And He has to be allowing it to come into our life. And, and, and He's letting it happen. You know, um, that poem that many of you have seen called Footprints. The lady who wrote that called Margaret Fishbeck went through some amazing trials. The person that she loved left her. She caught meningitis and was literally bedridden for months. She was at the lowest place of her life and wasn't even sure she, would, she was going to live. During that time, God brought a man into her life while she was in that condition who loved her and wanted to marry her but she wouldn't marry him she said this I'm out of trust I'm not sure I trust God and I know I don't trust men I'm just out of trust one night in her diary as she lay in bed she began to write and what she began to write was that poem that you and I know as footprints if you remember it, it says, One night I had a dream, and a man had a dream, and he dreamed that he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes of his life, and for each scene he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him and the other belonging to the Lord. But after the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand, and he noticed that many times along the path of his life there was only one set of footprints. 
And he also noticed that it happened to be at the very lowest and the very saddest times of his life. That bothered him. And he questioned the Lord about it. He said, Lord, you said once that I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I've noticed that during the most troublesome times of my life, there's only one set of footprints I don't understand, Lord. Why, when I needed you the very most, would you leave me? And the Lord replied, My precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. That's His care for you and me. You see, God's care is constant. Don't ever think when the devil comes to you and says God doesn't care about you, God's not concerned about your needs, that's where 2 Corinthians 10 comes in and you cast down those imaginations and you cast out that thought. It says anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And that, that's a phrase that means anything that exalts itself against what you know to be true about God. Haven't you ever had Satan give you thoughts that you knew weren't true about God? don't keep those don't keep entertaining those thoughts cast them out cast them down and bring every thought under the obedience of Christ God's care is constant and then let me give you statement number two about God His gifts are generous you agree that God only cares for us but He, he, he provides for us in a generous way God has been good to everybody in this room He blesses us with gifts and talents and abilities and, and all kinds of blessings Look at Psalm 136. You're in Proverbs 3. Just go back to your left there and pick up Psalm 136. Would you look at that psalm, please? This is a great psalm. <clears throat> David just gets to thanking the Lord and begins to praise the Lord. You notice where he starts out? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for His mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him who alone doeth great wonders, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him that by wisdom made the heavens, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him that stretcheth out over the earth above the waters, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him that made the great lights, for His mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for His mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for His mercy endureth forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for His mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for His mercy endureth forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for His mercy endureth forever. And overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him which led His people to the wilderness, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him which smote great kings, for His mercy endureth forever. And slew famous kings for his mercy endureth forever Sihon king of the Amorites for his mercy endureth forever and Og the king of Bashan for his mercy endureth forever and gave their land for a heritage for his mercy endureth forever even a heritage unto Israel his servant for his mercy endureth forever who remembereth us in our low estate for his mercy endureth forever and hath redeemed us from our enemies for his mercy endureth forever who giveth food to all flesh for his mercy endureth forever oh give thanks unto the God of heaven for his mercy endureth forever Oh, God is generous. And David, uh, every, all the blessings that he recounts here and all the wonderful things that God's done, and he reminds himself, it is because of His mercy. Yet God is merciful to us. That's why we have anything we have. According to His mercy, He saved us and washed us. And we're not going to die and go to hell. His gifts are generous. Every time he made a great statement about God, His mercy endureth forever Jesus never fails God can do anything 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 God can do anything but fail eyes have seen ears have heard it's recorded in God's word God can do anything but fail God will not fail you his gifts are generous his care is constant now let me give you some practical things about how we can develop our trust in God if, if the key is 
Listen, there's no doubt God is trustworthy. Now, how can I be trustworthy? And how can I develop to have the trust in God that I ought to have? You know, it's interesting how, how quick we are. We, we discussed this a while back here, I think a couple of weeks ago, the young boy who um, had said he died and went to heaven. And they wrote a book about it and had a movie boy, out about it and uh, all this stuff. He came he out two weeks ago and admitted, and I made it all up. It. Yeah. Not true. And he, he wrote a letter to the Lifeway Christian Bookstore and said, pull the book off the shelf, please. And, and uh, it's just not true. And um, he, he recanted his whole thing. But, you know, it's, it's funny how quick people were to believe a little boy who said, I saw heaven. And how slow we are to believe the God who created the heavens and the earth and told us about it to believe him. I, I got news for you. I knew there was a heaven long before that little boy said, I've been there. Huh? I knew there was heaven because the Bible says there is. God says there was. How quick are we to take the word of man and how slow to take the word of God? Trust. How do we develop that trust where we'll trust God and what He says? <clears throat> Number one, learn to trust Him in adversity. Did you know the Bible says that we're to trust God in times of adversity? Look at Psalm 56. You're still in Psalm 136, possibly. Look at Psalm 36. No, I'm sorry, Psalm 56. The 56th Psalm. <clears throat> Notice what David said. Notice verse number 3. What time I'm afraid, I will what? Trust in thee. In verse 4, in God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. So, because of that, what's the rest of the verse say? I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. I said, I put my faith in God. I put my trust in God. I'll not fear what flesh can do unto me. Can't fear what man would do unto me. In Psalm 34, he said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me out of all my troubles. God says, I can deliver you. David was learning to trust God in adversity. God asks us to trust him and it's, 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 it's not always easy to trust him when there's trouble, when there's adversity. When there's something happens in our life that's bigger than what we can reason or understand. And instead of doing our part, we kind of get involved in God's part. Our part is simply to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to what? Our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge Him. And what does He do? He will direct our path. But it's so easy for us to start directing the path. Figuring a way out of this. Figuring a way to, to take care of this. It's kind of like, God, you, you just don't understand my problems. Really. Well, you, you start figuring out the finance. Well, God, you just don't understand the finances. You don't understand all the mess I'm in. Really. God, you don't understand the complexity of my marriage. and You don't understand the complexity of my issues at work. You don't understand the issues I'm facing. Really? God wouldn't understand? Think about that. It's really simple, and that's why I think the Lord said you have to be like, except you become like a little child, you'll in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. A little child is so trusting. Is so trusting. You know, we were watching Drew last night, and, and my wife went over and... Um, trying to think what she was going to give. She gave him something to eat and, and a little bit of uh, uh, almond milk to drink. And, and you know what he does? He just looks up at you with these trusting eyes because he knows whatever you give me is going to be good. You know what I mean? You know what that is? That's just childlike trust. Hmm? You give him, you hand him something and you know what he's going to do when you hand it to him? Right in there. Because he trusts the one who's given it. That's childlike trust. Hey, whatever God hands down, are you willing to receive it from Him? Amen. Trusting Him that He knows what's best for you? You see, I trust in the Lord. 
And, and, and it's, it's, a, it's an oxymoron to say, I trust in the Lord, but I still have my fears. No, then when you trust in the Lord, I will not fear. I will not fear what can happen to me. Because God is in control and God will take care of me. It's like, it's like you have to say, Lord, like the man in the New Testament, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. All right, it's not something that, that, that just comes, but we've been there. We can say, God, I want to trust you in this. I, I want to believe you in this. But there's something in me that wants to pull back and not really want to do this. But God says, don't act on your fear. Act on your faith. Don't act on what you're afraid of. Act on what you have faith in and have faith in God. Trust God in adversity. It's David when he got to Ziklag and found out with his mighty men and found out that the uh, Amalekites had been there and destroyed the city and taken away all the women and children captive. And you remember, they were all discouraged and then the men went from discouragement to bitterness and, and anger and they all talked about doing what? you remember? Let's stone David. His fault. And there's David. What about those mighty men? What about the men he could confide in? No, they've all turned on him. They're talking about we ought to kill the guy. But 1 Samuel there, it talks about, you know what David did? In 2 Samuel, I think it is, he said, David encouraged himself in the Lord. David said, I've got to trust God in this situation. I can't figure it out. I don't know why it's happened. I don't know what. But he put his trust in God. And you know what God told him? God spoke to him and said, you go after him. You're going to recover everything. He got the answer he needed, but he had to trust in God. And it wasn't easy to do. Never is. But it's the right thing to do. So you trust him in adversity. But then, and, and as hard as that is, this second one might be harder than that one, and that is this. Trust him in plenty. You know, oftentimes it's not hard to cry out to God when we have a great need. Oftentimes when it's hardest to cry out to God for help is when we have what we need. Oh God, I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill. Oh God, we've got to get the car repaired. Oh God, my child's sick. We've got to get him to the hospital. Oh God, we need your help. But when you have the money to pay for the car and you have the money to pay for the food and you have the money to take care of the bill, then God doesn't hear much from us. We, we tend not to trust Him much when there's plenty. When we're blessed, there's a tendency for us to either trust in ourselves or trust in the blessings that God's given to us. And sometimes this area becomes very difficult. It's easy for us to run to God real fast when we have problems, but ignore God when we're blessed. We kind of get to thinking, you know, we're doing pretty good here. Got everything, all our needs met. Everything's taken care of. And it's not careful we can become self-reliant instead of God-reliant. And we lose our trust in God. So we trust Him in adversity. We trust Him in plenty. And then, let me give you number three, and this is, this is important. Trust God as your source. Trust God as your source. It's It's... It's easy to trust God's instruments of provision more than trust God. It's easy to trust God for your job instead of the God who gave you the job. It's easy to, to, to trust in our health instead of the God who gives us our health. You know, the I'm young, I'm strong, I can do it. I'm okay. I, 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 I got it under control. And we don't trust God. Look at Proverbs 18, would you please? Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. Notice verse 10 and 11, would you please? Proverbs 18, look at verse number 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. That's the, 
the the figure in the in the in the days of war in those days, folks would build towers and they could run into it and be safe up in the tower. And they 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 didn't have means to get there in those days. Any means to get up to where they were, if somebody tried to get up, it's easy to to pick them off, <laughs> and uh, it's a safe place. And they're likening the Lord to that. But but wait, there's a contrast here. Look at verse eleven. The rich man's wealth is his strong city, and as a high wall in his own conceit. So while, while the one in verse 10, the righteous, they run to the Lord for safety. But in verse 11, the rich man, where does he run? Yeah, to his wealth. His wealth is his safety. His wealth is his uh, high wall, his unscalable wall, his wall of Jericho, so to speak, that he's going to hide, hide behind, and, and that he makes his possessions his fortified city, and it's an unscalable wall that can't be touched, and he'll hide behind it. I recall Brother Keith Gomez, who pastors over in Elgin, Illinois, and he pastors in, the, in an affluent part of town, and he said just... just just half a block or so from their church, he can go into a neighborhood that, that has, you know, million dollar homes in it. And he goes in there to knock on a door, and, and he says, you'll knock on the door, and of course, there's a guy with, you know, six, eight bedroom home, and, you know, 12 bathrooms, and uh, he's got a big RV in the driveway, and a four car garage, and all these things, and he's going to knock on his door, and he says, I, I tell him that he needs to be born again. He says, what do I need God for? Why? Look at all I got. Hmm? Look at everything I have. What do I need God for? What's he doing? He's trusting in his wealth. He's running to his riches and he's hiding in that. And you say, wow, well, preacher, that's certainly not my issue. I understand. Huh? But what is your unscalable wall? What is it that you run to? Is it a college degree? Is it your savings account? Is it your job? Is it your health? What is it that you run to and, and trust in that instead of trusting in God as your source? Instead of going to the Lord as your strong tower and saying He's the one I run to. The fellow, one fellow said, God, it seems like I just can't lean on you like I want. And God said, well, maybe it's because you never put your total weight on me. You're still using your own strength. You're still using your own muscles. Just relax. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. S.M. Lockridge is a preacher. You might remember we played a... It was a video, but not of him preaching, but it was an audio of him preaching about that's my king. And I hear some of the same things here, but he had a message called, You Can Trust Him. And I tried to find it so I could hear you hear him say it, but I couldn't, hear, I couldn't find it anywhere. So I'm going to read you what he wrote about You Can Trust Him, actually what he preached. Listen carefully. You can trust Him. He's the one who made us. It is He who made us and not we ourselves. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows His handiwork. No means of measure can define His limitless love and no foreseeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of His shoreless supply. I'm telling you today, you can trust Him. No barrier can hinder Him from pouring out His blessing. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's empirically, powerfully, and impartially merciful. He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He is God's Son. He's the sinner's Savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. I'm trying to tell you, church, you can trust Him. He does not have to call for help, and you can't confuse Him. He doesn't need you, and He doesn't need me. He stands alone in the solitude of Himself. He's august. He's unique. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is supreme. He is preeminent. 
He's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the supreme problem of higher criticism. He's the fundamental doctrine of truthology. He's the cardinal necessity of the spiritual religion. He's the miracle of the age. He's the superlative of everything good that you can call him. I'm trying to tell you, you can trust him. He can satisfy all your needs, and he can do it simultaneously. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he sees. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the leper. He forgives the sinner. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the people. He blesses the young. He regards the ages. He rewards the diligent. He beautifies the meek. I'm trying to tell you, church, you can trust Him. He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the path of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway to glory. You can trust Him. He's the master of the mighty. He's the capture of the conquerors. He's the head of heroes. He's the leader of legislators. He's the overseer of overcomers. He's the governor of governors. He's the prince of princes. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. You can trust Him. His office is manifold. His promise is sure. His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteousness. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. I wish I could describe Him to you. He's indescribable because He's incomprehensible. He's irresistible because He's invincible. You can't get him off your hands. You can't get him off your mind. You can't outlive him and you cannot live without him. Pilate couldn't stand it when he found out that he couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him and the witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree and Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him and thank God the grave couldn't hold him. There was nobody before him. There'll be nobody after him. He has no predecessor. He'll have no successor. You can't impeach him. He's not going to resign. You can trust him. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's all things. He's the giver of life. He's the joy out of every sorrow. He's the light of every darkness. He's the peace that passes all understanding. He's the giver of every good and perfect gift. You can trust him. There's no God before him. There'll be none after him. He is the first. He is the last. He is the preeminent. There is no other God. Wow. How about that? Can you trust him? Can you trust him? I pray we'd walk out of the building tonight knowing that he's trustworthy. What's it all come down to? Who do I trust? Will I trust God? And he is trustworthy. I want to be trustworthy to him. The relationship is built on trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Shall we, Father, take the truth now tonight. Thank you, Lord, for being trustworthy. Thank you that you are faithful. Thank you, Lord, there's none like you. So eloquently put by S.M. Lockridge. Lord, we're convinced, we are fully persuaded, we can trust you. And I pray that every individual tonight, under the sound of my voice, would understand they can trust you. Father, I pray that we would be trustworthy. I pray, Lord, we trust you in adversity. I pray, Lord, we would trust you in times of plenty. I pray, God, that we can trust you at all times and know that you will direct our path. So, Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. I pray, Lord, that anyone here that's trusting in something else would realize tonight their trust must be in God. You must be the source of our trust. 
you must be the source of our everything. We sang this morning, Lord, that Christ is all I need. He's made to me all I need. All I need. May that be the truth of our life and not just a song we sing. Help us to trust Thee. Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. and I'll finish the prayer in a moment, but I wonder how many folks tonight would say, Preacher, that message was something that I needed this evening. I'm, I, I, I'm aware in my head that God is trustworthy. But I need to pull that information from my head down into my heart to where I live like God is trustworthy. And my trust and my faith is in Him alone. Preacher, I realize that every area of a life comes down to trusting God. And I really want to do live those verses that I'll trust in the Lord with all my heart. That I'll not lean to my own understanding. That in all my ways I'll acknowledge Him. And I'll let him direct my path. I just want to do my part. I'll leave God's part to him. I wonder how many tonight would say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart tonight about this matter of trust. Pastor, pray for me this evening. Will you slip your hand up, Christian? Say, pray for me tonight. Yes. Amen. Amen. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have our invitation. God has spoken to your heart tonight. I want you to respond to him this evening. Just bow the knee and say, Lord, I'm trusting you from now on. Not with most of my heart, not with some of my heart, with all my heart. I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. I'm not going to try to figure it all out. I realize anything that comes in my life has come through your hand. And I will trust and I will obey. That's what our relationship is going to be built on. Heavenly Father, bless this invitation time. I thank you, Lord, for speaking to hearts tonight. And I pray your will to be done now in each heart and life. Lord, whatever it is you've laid on the heart of your people tonight and whatever you've spoken to them about, I pray they'd respond to you this evening. And Lord, we'd have a humble trust of our God tonight. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for your care. Thank you for your concern. Thank you for your provision for us. We love you. Meet with us now around these altars tonight, and we'll thank you for it. Quietly with your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Brother Bob's going to sing. God has spoken to your heart tonight. You respond to him. Will you please? Come every soul by sin oppressed. There's mercy with the Lord. And he will surely give you rest by trusting in his word. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you, He will save you, He will save you now. For Jesus shed His precious blood, rich blessings to bestow. Plunge now into the crimson flood that washes white as snow. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you, He will save you, He will save you now. Yes, Jesus is the truth, the way that leads you into rest. Believe in Him without delay, and you are fully blessed. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you, He will save you, He will save you now.
look this way for a minute if you would. We're glad to have Dean Blake coming tonight. Brother Dean, go ahead and stand up for us. Most of you know Dean's been coming for a while, and uh, he's coming tonight for membership in the church. And uh, He's been saved and scripturally baptized, and uh, he's, uh, we've had several good visits together, and uh, I think he's going to be a real blessing to us here at Bible Baptist Church, and we're thankful the Lord has sent him our way. All those in favor of welcoming Dean into the fellowship of our church, let it be known by a hearty eye Aye. and opposed by like sign. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll make sure <clears throat> get to the back back there, Dean, and uh, let folks greet you as they go out tonight. And uh, sure is a blessing to have you at Bible Baptist Amen. Church. Praise the Lord. That's good, isn't it? Amen. Amen. That's great. And uh, interesting man, knows the Bible, loves the Lord. And uh, you want to talk about the Word of God with somebody, you can get a hold of him. He'll talk about the Bible with you. And uh, we've had some great, great times together. Amen. All right, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord, hasn't it? And a uh, good day. Be, be careful. I have no idea what it's doing outside. Uh, just be careful going home. And uh, Lord willing, we'll uh, be here Wednesday evening for the midweek service, uh, Revelation 18. All right, let's pray together, shall we? Father, we thank you so much for another wonderful Lord's Day that you've blessed us with. Lord, it surely has been good, and it's been a good month. Thank you, Lord, for the folks you send our way. I'm reminded of what you said in Matthew chapter 16, that you will build your church. And Lord, we know you will. And Lord, thank you for the, the rivers. And thank you for Brother Eddie and uh, baptized today and now Brother Dean tonight. Thank you, Lord, for sending folks our way uh, to labor together with us. Help us to serve you. Help us to be faithful to you. Help us to continue to trust you. Lord, give us a good week this week and dismiss us with your care now. Give everyone safety as they travel the roads home. Lord, make us mindful throughout the week of your presence with us and help us to give you the glory in all we do. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. 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 Let's sing It's a Grand Thing to Be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's hear you sing. Hey, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus. Anywhere and everywhere I go for. It's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Don't forget, sign up for the testimonies and ushers meet down in the conference room.